Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to our channel where we are presenting lessons in mathematics. Okay, so like we keep on saying, uh, this channel is meant for you people. If you are not there, then we, we can't be here, alright? So we, we are here because we are there, alright? So the survival or the existence of this uh, channel depends on you people. Depends on you subscribing, depends on you watching the videos, uh, giving, giving us uh, some comments, okay? Giving us some feedback, alright? It's very important that we get uh, your feelings about the way we are presenting. But we, uh, we keep on improving the, the quality of uh, the way and even the quality of the videos, alright? Because we aim at providing the best because it is only the best that is good enough in our view. Okay, so in this presentation, I'm going to take you through the introductory part uh, to vectors. I want you to have an understanding of what vectors really are. Okay. And maybe we'll do some basic addition and subtraction of vectors. So now, by definition, what are we saying? We are saying a vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and size. Uh, magnitude, by magnitude we mean size, as well as the direction. So we are saying by a vector, we are saying it is a quantity that has got two things magnitude or size of a, uh, of a vector, as well as the direction. This defines a vector. Alright? Um, uh, good examples are velocity, weight, force, so on and so forth. Alright? But if a quantity only has size but not direction, that quantity is a scalar quantity. So we are saying, by square quantities, we are saying these are quantities with magnitude but no direction. Uh, what are the examples? Mass, distance, speed, etc., etc. So we are saying a vector should have two things, magnitude and the direction. Okay. So now, how do you represent then a vector? We are saying because a vector has got two things, it has direction and magnitude, then it can be represented by directed line segments, by a line, alright? Like this, okay? By a, a line, okay? By a, a line. Okay, can you erase the top part? Okay, so we can represent a vector by a directed D line e segment. Okay, that's what we are saying here. So, if you have, for example, this line, you are saying this is our vector, we can say A, others will just write A. Okay? So, you can use a direct line segment to represent a vector. So, what it means is that the length, okay, or maybe if I talk about the length, let me talk about this. This point where the vector is starting from is called the initial. Initial point. Others will call this as the tail. Alright? Then this one, where the, the vector ends, is called the terminal. Terminal point, or what we call the, the height. Alright? So we have got those aspects of a vector. So we are saying because a vector has got two things. Direction and the, um, the magnitude, hence you use a directed line segment to show a vector or to represent a vector. Now, the length of a vector, maybe from here to there, that would be the what? The magnitude. Alright? Then the arrow head here, this arrow is the direction. It represents the direction of who? A vector. Alright? So this arrow here, take a note, is showing the what? Direction. Over what? So it means that the vector is starting from this point going upwards. And when you are dealing with vectors, direction is very, very important. So we are saying if you have got this one, so this is the vector A or AB, this is vector PQ or P. Alright? So in this case we are saying AB is equal to what? A. 
Alright? PQ here is equal to what? Uh, B. By A, this means you're starting from A going to B. You're starting from P going to Q. Okay? That is uh, important as well. So, you use directed line in segments like this. The length of the direct line segment in case of magnitude of a vector. Okay? Then the angle head. The angle indicates the direction, like I've explained here. Okay? It indicates the direction. Now I've indicated that. Here, direction of a vector is important. Very, very important. Meaning that BA is opposite in direction to AB. Alright? So, if you have a vector here, You have a vector here, which is A, B, denoted by A, alright? So if we are saying vector A, B is equal to what? A. What that means that by A, B, by this arrowhead here, you are starting from A and going to what? You are going to B, alright? And this is the, 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 the vector there, or you can even put a bar or a dash here, a line. Means that BA is the opposite. Yes. Alright? BA is the opposite. Okay? BA is the opposite. BA is the opposite. Meaning that if you're talking about B, then you are moving from B coming here. That's what you are saying. BA is opposite in the relation to what? So you cannot say vector AB. Alright, is equal to vector BA. This is not correct. Alright? But you can say vector AB is equal to negative vector BA. By negative it means you say it is the really opposite of this. Okay? It is opposite. AB is opposite to BA. So you say negative BA to show that it is the opposite. Okay? And uh, you cannot say A, B is equal to B, A. Take note. These are not the same. Okay? At least you, you do that. So, the direction is very, very important. That's why you are saying B, A is equal to negative A, B. Yes. By negative, you are saying it is the, the reverse of this one. When you reverse this, it will be B, A. Okay? So, if you are dealing with the A, B, here, A, B, that is it. A, B, that is the a, then it means BA is the opposite, hence we indicate it by a negative. If it is opposite, we indicate it by a negative. So for BA, it will be moving like this, hence it becomes negative what? A there. Okay? Very, very important. I hope you are enjoying what we are presenting. These are vectors, very easy to understand. Okay, so that is how you represent a vector. That is how you represent a vector. Okay? That is how you represent a vector. That's how we represent a vector. Okay, so now we can look at the equal vectors. When are vectors said to be equal? Vectors are said to be equal if they satisfy two conditions. Alright? What are these two conditions? One, the first condition is the mass have the same magnitude. Alright? The size or the length of the directed line segment should be the same. Two, they must be in the same direction. So, if you have a vector, this one, all right, A, and another one, B here, we can conclude that A and B are equal if is equal to vector B if one, there is the magnitude, all right, two, the direction. These two conditions important. Is A and B in the same direction? Look at this arrow and that arrow. Yes. Is A and B in terms of magnitude the same? Yes. Then you conclude that vector A is equal to vector B. Regardless of their initial point, regardless of where they are starting from, they should not just start from the same point for you to conclude that they are equal vectors. Even when the points are different, as long as these two conditions are satisfied fully, then you can conclude that the vectors are what? Equal.
right? The vectors are equal. So they are saying two vectors are said to be equal if they have the same magnitude and direction, regardless of their initial point. Okay, regardless of their initial point. I hope that is okay. <coughs> Okay, so let's look at an example. Here, in this example, we want to see how we can uh, write vectors in coordinate form. Alright? As we will say vector form. Uh, given these vectors on a, on a graph, alright? How do you pick them? Alright? How do you determine the, the, the vectors? Okay, so here we have got it. A, B, C, D, and E. Now, you must take note that, it, no, sometimes others will leave this line, or we can put it. This is just presentations. Okay, so write down the vectors presented here in the diagram below you know, in coordinate form. Okay, so we we'll say answers. So I'll say normal number one. I'm dealing with a vector A. Okay, let me write something that is visible. A. Okay. So A, what are we going to do? For you to be able to give the give this vector, tell me this vector, you must look at the, the vector, the direction of the vector. So when you look at this one, we are starting from this point. Up to we are going in, all the way up that point, and the direction is going upwards. Right? So now you must go to the starting point, which is this one. Okay, here. Then you take movements in the x axis because this should be defined by x and what y. Right? So you, you take the movements along the x axis and the movements along the y axis. Okay, so what does this produce? So what we are saying is, you go to the initial point, which is this one. You must move along the x-axis, all right? So from here, you can go to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side. But what determines where you are going to go it is where the head is. So if the head is uh, towards the right-hand side, that's where you are supposed to, to go. That's where you are supposed to move. Not until you meet a line that will coincide with the head. For the terminal point. So from here, I'll start moving. I'll say, okay, from this point, I'll say one, two, three, uh, four. Okay. So from here, I've got one, two, three, four. Okay. So we are saying from here, I've got one, two, three, four. Why four here? This is the, the point at which. Uh, I will coincide with this head, all right? So from here, when you go upwards, you'll be able to meet the head. So you start from here, say, one, two, three, four. It means x is four. Now, what kind of a sign are you going to have? Is it possible because you're going to the right-hand side? So here, they'll be what? Four, okay? They'll be four. Okay, so they'll be four. Why? Because I'm going to the right-hand side. If you were going to the left hand side, this would have been a negative. Okay? Now, we are saying here, you have one, two, three, four, isn't it? So, x is four. But you must move not until you meet the, 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 the terminal point. I'll say one, two, three. So, why is three? Again, why is it that three is positive? Because you are, from here, you are going upwards. If you were going downward, the the answer would have been a negative. Okay? So, this is the, the answer here. Alright? And it ends there. Okay? Then, Roman numeral 2. We get the vector out, B. So, again, we do the same. We look at B. So, when you look at B, uh, okay, let me stand nice so that you are able to see. When you look at B, you are starting from this, look at the arrow. Arrow is going downwards. Meaning that you are starting from this point, coming down all the way to that point. So, you are supposed to start from this point, alright? You either go to the right hand side or left. But in this case, because the arrow is downward, 
So you must go to the left hand side. Not until you meet this head or terminal point. So you are going to say from here, one, two. Alright? Two. I've made two steps to the left. But because you are going to the left hand side, then it must be negative. So here you have negative two. Okay? Then from here, you come down, not until you meet the, the terminal point. We are going to say from here, one, two. So again, it becomes negative because they are going downwards. So negative what? Two. Negative two. That's that. Okay? Then we go to Roman numeral three. Here we are dealing with what? C, letter C. Where is C? This is C. Look at C. The other is going upwards. Where are you starting from? Here. Okay? So because it's going this side, what the left hand side. So it means you must move from here, going this side. Not until you meet a point or a line that coincides with the terminal point. So from here, I'll start saying one, two, three, four. All right? So it's four steps to the left. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this six steps upwards. So you're going to have negative 4 and 6. Okay, write them nicely. That's what you're going to have. Then we go to Roman numeral 4. We go to letter D. What do we get? D, where is D? He. Look at where we are going. We are going down. We are starting from he. Okay. We are starting from there. So I think we need to make movements. And the second point is you make movements along the X E axis. Right? Not until you meet the terminal point. Alright? So when you look at this point here, if you are going to make movements along the X axis, there's no way you're going to meet the, the head. You are already you are already in the same line as the the head. Meaning that here X is zero, you don't need to make any movement because you are already coinciding with the what? The terminal point. So in this case, X should be zero. Alright? How about Y? So you're going to move from here, not until you meet that head. So you're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4. But because you're going downwards, it must be negative. So here you're going to have negative what? 4. Alright? Then we go to the fifth one, which is what? E. So E again, you look at the arrow. So the, we are moving from here going like that. Okay? So I must move in the x-axis if it's possible. So from here, we're going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright? You have got it, 6 there. So you have got it, 6 E. Then what is Y? You don't need to make any movement along the y axis, uh, along the y axis for you to find the what? The terminal point. Because you're already there. So here Y is what? 0. Alright? There Y is what? 0. I hope uh, this is okay. So please need to know the direction of the vectors that you are dealing with. I hope you've liked our presentation. Please subscribe. The way it is, subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe. You'll be able to, to get the maximum benefits. But I'll give you an exercise. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is your exercise. So this is letter P or vector P, S, Q, U. This is T, and that is R. Okay, so make sure that when you copy them, take note these are small letters eh? or lower lowercase letters. Okay, so attempt, I'm sure you'll be able to get them. Thanks so much.